In this video, we're going to focus on how we can add and remove data sets here, as you can see here. And if I refresh them, it starts with nothing. But when we start to select certain stocks that we want to see, and you can see here, this is just a basic line chart where we add up and remove items. And of course, we will eventually go deeper into stocks, but this is just a basic foundation. So let's start to look how to do this. So let's start to look how to add and remove data sets from a chart in chart.js. So the first thing what we need is we need to go to chartjs3.com, getting started this specific link here and get the default code, which you can find in here. We're going to grab this entire chunk of code here and the link here, by the way, above, you can find as well in the description box. So once you copy this entire chunk of code, and if you want to understand the code, make sure you watch this video here, we're going to put that in here. So we're going to cut out this. And then we're going to put that in here, save, refresh. What I will do here is I will maximize the chart size here and I will eventually convert it into a uh, line chart. So this, let's put the width here on 80% to have a big chart. There you are. Then we're going to convert this into a line chart, save that, refresh. There we are. Now, what I want to do is basically create buttons and these buttons will show or hide a specific data set. So I'm going to say here button and we're going to do here an on click eventually and this will show for example a stock value or stock chart. In this case our chart is very basic so we want to consider much with month opening and closing time we just skip those for now. So we have this one here and we can say here the first one will be uh, let's say Tesla for example and of course spell it correctly and like that. And then what I will do is I will add two more and say here one, two, and three. And we want to compare these eventually with a Ford. And finally, we have Tesla, Ford, and let's say Toyota. So once we have this, we can save this, refresh. All right, we have the buttons, but of course, it's not functional yet. So what we're going to do now is to add up basically the items. And what I want to do for that is I want to add up data sets, but I'm going to copy this data set here. Go to copy this because this will be uh, basically this is a structure that we can use and I'm going down here and then what I will do is I'll just put that in here paste that in there but I will say here constant and let's say this will be the stocks equal and I make basically an object here but that's an array as well put like that and closing bracket here so for Tesla, I'll just get the first color there. There we are. Then what I could do is we'll basically just copy this all. I'm going to copy this. And just say we have now another one. We just put it in like that. And another one, put it in like that. So I will say here, this is Tesla. And I'll put all the values on, say, number 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, six and 6. Then I can just copy this, uh, make sure we have this all correct, like that. There we are. That looks a bit more organized. Then we're going to say here, this is Ford. And we have finally, here's Toyota. So now we have this, I need to have some different colors. So for Ford, I'll just grab the blue color. That's the second one in command or in, in order. So put that in there, put that in there. And finally for Toyota, I have no idea. I'll just grab the black color here. Let's put that in there, put that in there, put a comma here, although it doesn't really matter. And what we want to do here, 0.2. So now we have these here, this is Toyota. Let's make sure we have different numbers on this. So I'll just say here, number three, number three, number three. All right, and it should be seven times. And finally here, let's do number nine, number nine. There we are. So we have all of these numbers ready. If I save this, of course, nothing happens yet. So what I want to do is eventually these index numbers here, as you can see here, which are is basically our uh, argument, will later on match with these array index number here, zero, one, and two. So that's very important for us. So what we're going to do now is basically create a function and this function will have the name of what we specified here on the on click. 
So there will be a stock. So the function will be called stock. Let me say here, I guess you could say index, or let's give it value. And then what I want to do is a few things. When I click on that, I want to show it, but when I click again on it or toggle it, basically, we want to toggle the line to hide the line or remove it, not even hide it because hiding in Chart.js is this. So this is basically hiding it. But what we want to do is when we click on it, show it. And when we click again on it, remove it. So we can compare these items, but also remove them if we want to. So there's two parts of this. So uh, let's start with number one. When we're going to add an item here, what I have to do is, well, first of all, let's start to create a new constant with array. And this constant with array is basically, we're going to create a map array method. And what we want to do is we want to look through all of those labels here, if they are in this area here. So basically what we're going to do is because later on, we're going to remove this. This here has no more value because this part is not even part of it that we need to know. So if I save this right now, it just doesn't show here, or I guess it gives an error. We're not allowed to do this, of course, because there is absolutely nothing in here. However, this here is very important because with this, let me start to push that in there. Then we can start to work on that. So. Let's do it for now. Let's see. Uh, we still have an error because I think I'm deleting something unintentionally. Uh, let's look at that. What am I deleting? I guess I have no idea. What did I do? Oh, of course. So the reason why there is an error, that's of course none of this. This one is fine. This is allowed because this is a blank array, but I'm looking at this here down. This is of course, it indicates here, uh, number 100. 141, which is this part here. So what I want to do here is very simple. I want to look through here and basically if we push any value into this data point, and if you're wondering what push is, maybe I should just push something. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say here, first of all, I'm going to say here, my chart and the my chart object is a reference of this one here. And this here goes all the way into the data and from data we can go to data sets and then we can push and push is adding a value into the array of this one here of the data sets so i'm going to say yeah, this dot data dot data sets dot push and if i do this what i could do for example is say here uh stocks index number zero which would be mean tesla so if i do this i will have here now or whatever we selected. Let's do this one here. The value here is the reference of this here, these here. So if I save this, refresh, I press. All right, interesting. Apparently it doesn't work. And the reason why I already know now, of course, my bad. What we need to do here is we're going to say my chart dot update to update the change. So it will redraw the chart. There we are. As you can see here, we can push this on. However, if you keep on pushing here, you might see this here. It looks like there's only three values, but in reality, there might be more at the back. And although it doesn't show here, it will filter it out nicely. But this is, uh, if you look at the array code, you will see that there's something hidden at the back. So we have to make sure that this works correctly because we need to do it two ways. You need to understand, of course, if you click on this, it should hide or remove Tesla from the lines here. And if I do this one here, you can see a four moves moves to the very end, it adds it in here, but it should hide it or remove it from that chart. So how, what are we going to do? So how can we solve this? Well, basically that's why we have this concept of array, because what we're going to do here is we want to loop through this, uh, or what is that? The data set here. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's do here, console log. You have the data sets here, save, refresh. So if I press on this, you can see here our data set is becoming extended. If I press multiple times Tesla, we get too many Teslas. While in reality, we only have three here. It shows here three. However, this here, it just, it, this is not right. That makes sense, of course. So what we want to do is maximum of three items. So how do we do this? That's why we're going to use this method here. So we're going to create a new array and this array will just grab these labels of each item. So I'm going to say here, 
my chart. Basically, I'm just going into that specific item there. Dot data. Dot data. Set. Dot map. And the map method will will basically loop through every item here that we're going to specify. So we're going to say a data set as a shorthand for this area, and then it will loop through every item, and then we can say your index. And then what I want to do is a function error expression. And now all I want is basically to create an array that grabs all these labels here. So I'm going to say you return data set. Remember the data set here, and that is uh, the shorthand, and I say dot label. Doing that, we are getting basically this label here of each item. So now if I do a console log and show here what's array, save, refresh. Press, 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 all right, as you can see here. But if I press here many times, it shows this. And you might say, hold on, did I now just press certain items, but it's only showing one? That is correct, because when we press this, it will add, and then it will show here. So uh, it will record it or add up the item, but you will see here this, but you will see only two items in here. Because the other one is already in there, but it doesn't show, of course. So that's the after effect, because this is what happens afterwards. So that's very important. But it doesn't matter, because it understands this well. So now we have this part, but of course we're not done here. What I want to do is the following. I want to know if we already have Tesla or Ford selected. I want to click again Ford, but now I want to remove Ford from the list. So we need to say, can we check right now in this array, do we have this existing value that we have specified or that we're looking for, which is the value which we're going to get eventually these items here. So let's start to do this. So what I'm going to do here is basically to, to do this, we can do a console log. And what we're going to say here in the array, you're going to grab this array and in this array, we're going to search for the index number. If there would be any value existing, we will get the index of that. And the index number of that. So what is the value we're looking for within this array? Well, basically, we're going to look for this of or for the within the stocks, which is this constant here. And then we're going to say the index number would be depending on what we select, because remember our index number here at the very bottom of the top says zero, one and two. So we're just going to say here instead of index, we just say value here. That's a specified specified. And then we're going to say here dot label. When we do this, we will get the index number if it's in there. So if I click on Tesla, right now it's minus one. Why minus one? Because it has not been in there. It would, uh, uh, but now if I click on it, it is recognizing and it says the first one it will see here is of course the index zero because it's the very first one in there. And as well, the second one. However, if you only have one unique value, let's do this one, you ever do this, it doesn't work, but now it should work and it says index number two. All right, you can see it is correct, index number two is four. But of course we still have this double, we need to make sure that this is being filtered out. So we're going to remove these doubles or at least avoid having double values in here. So what we're going to do here is, because what is very important, if it's not in there, it gives a value of negative one, meaning it's not in there because there's no uh, there's no array with negative one, although there are some options, I think, right now with JavaScript ES6, but anyway, doesn't matter. Let's ignore that because this is how this works. So we're going to use the way that works in our advantage. So what we're going to do is very simple. We're going to say an if statement. In this if statement, we're going to specify uh, the following. We're going to grab basically this item here. We're going to grab this, including the parentheses here. Copy this. Put it in there. So we say if the label, let me say here, if it's larger than minus one, what we want to do then is the following. We're going to say into the my chart and then into the data sets, we want to remove the additional value and that method is called the splice array method. So we're going to splice that part. Basically, it's a part of it. We're going to just slice it out or I guess that's not the right term maybe because slice is another term, but we just remove that part, but we can keep everything else intact. 
So what I'm going to say here is we're going to splice. So what are we going to splice then? It's basically the following here. Uh, this entire item here, we're going to splice that because splice has two values. The index number, basically the index number, and then how many values are we going to remove? We're going to remove only one value. So that's number one. And then index number would be depending on where the position is in our item here. That's this one basically, or down here. Maybe we could even give it a shorter name, I guess, constant position. Let's give it the position, putting it like that. Copy this and then, well, I can, we can use that here, remove that one, I guess, like that. And we can say here as well, the position, make sure we have this all covered like that. So if the position is negative one, in that case, get the position, whatever the position is, and then remove that one. So if I do this now, if I save this, we might see now a new item, all right, number 144. Uh, my bad here, no parentheses, make sure you have the parentheses on both sides, save, refresh. All right, press this, fine, there we are, and there we are. So if I do this, as you can see now, what is happening, even if I click multi multiple times, it will always keep only one item here. Why is it? Uh, you might say, why is it still showing one item? Shouldn't it be removed? Well, because this item here is still in conflict. So let's start to solve that. Let's remove this console log. And I'm going to just delete this to clean it up. And then here, basically, we could do just a simple else statement. If that's not the case, we just can say copy this and push that value in there. And now let's double test this. Save refresh press 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 and now i want to remove toyota there we are remove ford there we are remove tesla and there you are and if we press this it works all fine just to make sure let's see a uh our array let's copy our entire array see if our array is very nicely cleaned up just to be sure and then i think we're done here save that refresh press this press this there you are you can see here our array is starting to clean up as well absolutely phenomenal and of course it doesn't show yet but when i click again on tesla you will see here now we have the full item and of course this is existing and then after it changes here i'm doing the things so now you can see here it's beautiful they're absolutely phenomenal and that is basically how we can compare this of course you might say well how do we do it with, with uh, data with uh, time and everything like a stock i'll make a separate video for that so if you're excited and enjoy this video and you want to know even more, like for example, how you can do the financial part of it with the candlestick chart like this, in that case, I'm going to recommend you this video here on how to create a candlestick chart in ChartJS3. And we're going to use for that the ChartJS financial plugin. Highly recommend it as well to explore.